right. I don't know if this is better. Test one, two. Yeah, maybe. I just don't want the drums. Test one, two. Yeah. It's okay? It's okay. It's okay. Okay. All right. It's okay. Well, I, you know, We're I'm your guinea guys. pig. guys. Welcome. Oh, okay. We are, we hey. are live. Hey. Thank you, <laughs> Rachel. What's up? You're welcome. Thank you. Oh. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> okay, Rachel. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am Edu Ribeiro, and I, I have to say first, I'm sorry about my bad English. We are starting today. Uh, Trust me, very... you're great. Oh, thank you. We are starting today. A, 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 a honor for me to host some great Germans that I love, that the host some American Germans that I really love and, and, and enjoy the, the He's playing and they listen too much. And we're going to start today with this gentleman, this uh, uh, unbelievable drummer and, and a, a very influence uh, uh, for me and uh, as a drummer and as a composer and, and as a arrangement. And please, please, people, uh, clap your hands to, 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 to <laughs> Clarence Penn. Uh, thank you, brother. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. You know, um, I'm just doing what everybody else is doing. Trying my best over here. That's the oh. only thing we can all do. <laughs> oh, man, but uh, you, 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 you do it. Uh, you did it very, very good. Thank you for 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 doing that uh, all the time. Oh. Uh, so uh, this is the first. Um, this is the first installation or uh, the series of this, right? Yes, this is of the first this, e episode. Okay. Uh, yeah. Wow. And so. did you know? Did you know? Uh, 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 I, I I don't know if you if you know that uh, I have a, a online course with Open Studio, and they have a lot of courses that that's great, man. And, and it's really? my honor to, to, to be here and, and talking with you. Oh. Well, they're very lucky to have you because um, you know I've seen you know several YouTube videos of you um explaining what you do and i have to say man you're very talented as a teacher it's there's a lot of great players trust me that's that's great but for someone to be able to explain what they do you know um i think that's really really important that's i'm still trying to learn that myself but you know we need people that can that can speak that can tell and explain what they're doing at at, at the at the drum set or no matter what the instrument is yeah, it's hard to do that because sometimes we, we just want to play and want to, to, to make music and and but uh, I I used to to, to, to teach in, in, in a university here in Sao Paulo. I am in Sao Paulo. That is a is a big continental conversation. I am in Sao Paulo and Carlos is in New York. That I'm in Brooklyn. That's right. <laughs> and I used to teach here uh, more than 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 13 years. And when I wow. started to do that, was something that uh, for me was so so good as a drummer, because I have to 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 to, to know more what I'm doing, you have to more to, to, to be more clear and what I'm doing to 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 teach people. That was so good to to to, to do. Yeah, well, you know when I um I taught during the summer at Banff in Canada for like almost ten years, and it was during that that time that i learned um how to to be able to explain and 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 i thought about the importance of of being able to explain you know what we do on the drums or what you do at any instrument but like you know when i first got up there i was just like wow i never thought about like trying to explain something to someone who has no idea what i'm doing if i'm playing five over four or three over three, whatever you know anything that i'm doing on the drums it's like wow and uh yeah every every year i got better i felt you know because i cared actually you know and i you know when i'm not teaching if i'm watching another video on on youtube i want to be able to explain that to like i, I think about like my, my my son or or a younger person i want to be able to try to explain that to them so to be able to explain it on a level that the common person can understand is 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 what i'm trying to to get to you understand yeah, you know because yeah. You and I, we can talk about polyrhythms, seven over two, seven over four, whatever, you know, 13s, whatever. Mm -hmm. But the, the average person is not going to understand that or may not yeah. understand that. There are a lot of people that will understand that. But there are some there's a, a lot of people that would be like kind of lost or they they can play it, but they can't explain what they're playing. You know, 
And so, yeah. you know, it's yeah. just, you know, and, we're all great players. It's, it's all, all that stuff makes us a better, you know. And, and that, there's, some, there's some trick that you have to, 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 to show people that is not a, a, a mystery. They can do that. Maybe if they do that, and after that another another step, and after that another step, they uh, they are going to understand that. Because sometimes uh, people listen something and said, "Oh, that is impossible. I can't do that." Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, yeah. because they don't know. Right, exactly. Yeah, and, I was. Uh, oh, please. No, I was just saying I was doing a a master class uh, last week, mm -hmm. and I was explaining to the students. Um, my concept it's a little concept but like what we do as drummers is a little bit like magic you know it's it's or or it's, it's deceiving it's because when you really slow down what we do mm -hmm. it's like oh my god that's all you're doing it's so simple but the things that we're always doing right we're doing eighth notes 16th notes we're doing triplets you know some of us go to fives and sevens but it's just really we we're doing it either displacing it, moving it over, or we're doing it super, super, super fast. And when you do it that fast, then the brain is just like, oh my God, what is that? You know, it's so fast. It's like, it's a mystery. But when you slow it down, mm -hmm. it's just like when you transcribe, right? Like when I was uh, many, many years ago, when I was in college, we were transcribing, you know, drummers, Omar Hakim, Vinny Cayuta, uh, Philly Joe, all of those guys. But we had a tape recorder and we could slow it only halfway down. Wow. But, you know, um, it was by Marantz, but we used to slow it down. And then when you slow it down, you're like, oh, that's all they're doing, you know? And then you have to work up the speed, you know? It's not that simple, but it's just like, at least when you slow it down, you can see what it is or, yeah, hear what it is. <laughs> yeah, for me, for me, it's, it's the same with the language. For me, English right. is a mystery. It's still, still doing. Uh, sometimes you, you, you tell something for me that I said, oh, what is this, what is this word? I can't understand that. When I, when I slow down and I read the, 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 the and I, I understand the word and I understand the meaning that it's easy to, 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 to speak, uh, uh, speak faster after that. that right. That. You know, no, it's a, you know, my wife is actually um, half French, half Japanese, so we speak Japanese and English in the house. And then some French when when her parents, uh, when her father comes. Um, so as far as, uh, you know, how the ears uh, receives languages, I do understand your position. And because you speak so well, and I'm not trying to give you any like a big compliment, but you speak well. So Americans or people that speak English, we assume that you understand everything that we're saying, even though there's some words that go and you're like, Okay, I don't know that word, but then you you put it in the context and you try to yeah. understand. That's what my wife does. You know, my wife speaks. It's almost like with no accent. And when you speak to her, you you would you would swear that she was a American or that she was born here. I mean, she's a pretty amazing with languages. And and when I tell people that's like her third language, they're just like, "What do you mean third language?" <laughs> she, you know, she speaks English very well, but it's just like you know, it's the context. So yeah. No, bravo, man. Keep going. I, and I know, and I think all, all the, the listeners and viewers know that Portuguese is very, very hard. Oh, man. It's, I, it's, it's, you know, I, yeah, Japanese is easier for me than speaking Portuguese. Portuguese well, is hard. Jap <laughs> Japanese, Japanese is hard, man. It's so hard. <laughs> and and, and talk, talking about hard, hard, hard things, I have a question for you uh -oh. about, uh -oh. about, about music, about drums. <laughs> and uh, when I when I listen to your, your playing all the time and your your records uh, your arrangements and you're playing with Maria Schneider, uh, I know that you play a lot of dif difficult uh, time signatures uh, uh, hard. I tried to play with Maria Schneider two times twice, <laughs> and I remember that I is the Lando. That's something. Ah. That's so yeah. hard to play it's a beautiful and, and, tune yeah <laughs> yeah and, and you play that like uh, as are you driving your car in the, in the very very good uh, uh, road no uh, uh, oh man it's, right, it's right, the yeah. highway um, obrigado oh man that's beautiful that's amazing stuff amazing music and amazing playing man uh, and Thank you. i want to ask you 
how how did you develop that that sense of play uh, uh, that time signatures so fluently? Because sometimes I try to do that and I I, I put my attention on some pattern that a base pattern something that try to, to 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 go forward to to go moving forward, but I can't do it so fluently. How how do you do you develop it? Do you develop it that? Um. Well, I mean, with Ars de Lando, she, of course, it's a land based off of this, this Lando rhythm, um, which I've studied. Um, I've studied quite a bit of music other than music that started in North America. Um, but like, I think what happens is sometimes drummers or instrumentalists, when they see a measure of 5-8 or 3-8 or something like that, it, it, it goes here. It goes, they 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 want to count that out. It's like one, two, three. Okay, it, it's very, it's in your head. And wh where I'm trying to come from is like, when I see that, I want to I wanna know internally, organically, what a three feels like. Uh, bang. I'm like, not one, two, three, boom, t get. I'm like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm really trying to feel a rhythm of three or like, uh, uh, that's three. So, or one, two, three, four, five, um. Uh, 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 being that's really very on on the beat but what i'm trying to do is trying to 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 i try to make everything i said this before um in another session like i try to make everything round like when you look at music especially rhythm music it could be very up and down or very square or very segmented right it's mm -hmm. very and the way that I want to do it is I want to round those edges. So, you know, I, I that that comes from looking at whatever the the phrase is, say if it's a seven beat phrase or three bar phrase or a, a nine beat phrase or whatever that phrase is. So I go through and I did this with Maria's music. I went through and I marked the phrasing. OK, and then I would put a big number. OK, this is a seven beat phrase or this is a three and a half bar phrase and it starts again mm -hmm. after that and so i write these numbers out and then i can start thinking of thinking of music in these larger ways mm -hmm. of, of okay. instead of looking at measure by measure time signature by time signature because mm -hmm. sometimes what i've noticed is that um if you don't well even if you do play drums not everyone writes how you would hear it you know sometimes you 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 play somebody's music and it's written in, I don't know, say if it's written in 5-4, mm -hmm. but for me, it may be easier because it sounds like it's more in 5-8. Or it may be in, let's say, it may be in in, a, in 11, right? So mm -hmm. it may be 4-4 four, four, and 3, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to a 6 and a 5. So I go through and I say, what what is actually going on? What What am I hearing? What is the phrase that that resonates with me not what they wrote on a piece of paper because okay. what they wrote on a piece of paper is just a suggestion right yes it's for for us we have to go deeper i feel that that's my job to go further than what's on the piece of paper you know mm -hmm. i i always with my students when we're learning music i make sure that they learn accounting system at least three or four counting systems per song especially if it's in like i don't know if it's in seven or a lot of people nowadays and especially in new york they write these very difficult time signatures wow. and 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 so we we come up with ways of counting that and then once you're counting this right and verbally counting once you do this a while as you're practicing not just at the drum set right because as soon as we put our drum sticks in our hand when we start playing, we stop thinking. Yeah. We automatically start it, we're thinking about the drums. It's just like then we all all of the intelligence or all of that that organic stuff goes away because we're so tied into to what we're yeah. doing on the drums. So, yeah. you know, I make sure that people and I learned singing uh, from Alan Dawson when I was with, studying with Alan Dawson. You have to be able to sing or count a certain uh, systems different ways because you know once you i think the more uh information you have the more flexible you are you know mm -hmm. um being able to count in a displaced fashion 
you know, mm-hmm. if yeah. instead of, you know, and, and you know, it, it could be, you could say one, two, three, four, one. And that's like counting on the, on the, on the quarter note. Right. But mm-hmm. then what if you want to displace it, you can just put it on the, the E one, two, three, four, yeah. one, two, or one, two, three, four. And that becomes yeah. a new one. And then you practice that or you, you know, so all of these things that I try to have in my foundation and I want to be able to, to utilize these things immediately or, you know, at any time that I want to, instead of, you know, because I think sometimes drummers learn how to play a song. They learn how to play it one way. It may be a great way, but that's, the, to me, that's the limitation. I yeah. want to learn it to play it many ways, right? I, yeah. I want the music to always be evolving or, 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 or organic, you know? When I listen yeah. to Elvin Jones, to me, he sounded like he was organic. It was always evolving. You know, yeah. they're like you listen to somebody like Buddy Rich. Okay, it was always the same. It was perfect. It was precision. It's amazing, but it didn't grow all the time. But Elvin's just like, I don't know what what is that that he's doing, or you know, this the drummers that play that way really inspire me. And and yeah. so that's what I try to do um, with these time signatures. With 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 Maria, I remember when we first sight read that song. Um, yeah. So the the landos boont at boom boont at at right what it could be yeah um and um when she first brought it in I was like whoa this is slick but and she interspersed these bars of three right there's a bar, those yeah. three eights in there she breaks up that rhythm so instead of like every time I got to that I I just wanted to feel what that like it feels like it's a suspension you know instead of playing through it it's just let it breathe you know yeah and 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 when you let it breathe you can add drama you can do a cymbal swell and grab the cymbal and let it you know let silence be a part of 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 the rhythm also you know so it's it's just you know that's kind of like where i'm coming from with the with the with the time signatures i'm lucky enough to play with um somebody like will vinson who's a great saxophonist Mm -hmm. um he writes incredibly difficult uh Arrange, arrangements I, I mean they're not r- very heady but they are difficult you know um these these polyrhythms and things and i really when i'm practicing them i try i'm trying to figure out how to play these things as comfortable and as organic as possible you know instead of really like you know drummers like i, I guess i'm not like one of those like precision type of <laughs> drummers you know well, yeah uh, it's something that, that for me uh when i when i when I took something so hard, so difficult as that, as, as this, this Iris Delano, when I catch some way to play, I take it for me. And I said, I, I have to survive. I have, I have to, <laughs> to, to finish that. But after that, you can create a, a lot. And, and, and when I was talking that, I was thinking, how long did you, uh, how long did you prepare to, to, to do that? Because, uh, you could sight reading, I, I know that, but mm-hmm. when, when, when I, don't, I don't know if, you, if, if it's there time, but you take a lot of time, uh, you take some time to, to be prepared to that, to do that kind of uh, elaborations, to kind of uh, uh, laboratory with your right. own you play. Know, well, actually, you know, I'm, I'm a big, um, I'm really big on not taking a lot of time. Like, I'm, I'm really, I, I, I tell my students and I push myself, I want to internalize it as soon as possible. I don't wow. want to live with it. I immediately, I want to put, if I learn a lick, I want to put it in music. I want to put it in a different feel. I want to put it in different time signature. I want to, I want to make music with this thing that I'm learning. If it's okay. a, if it's a lick or a pattern. So with, with, um, Ari Zilando, <clears throat> By the second time we 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 read that that song, it was already evolving. Yeah. You know, for me, you know, the first time we we sight read something, and this is with any any music for me. The first time I sight read it, I'm trying to stay out of the way of the music and trying to see what the the composer's idea or vision is for the for the music. Yeah. The second time, I'm already, and when I'm when I'm reading the first time, a lot a lot of drummers do this, and I think it's a mistake when you're sight reading. You close off your ears and you only concentrate on the, yeah. the paper and trying yeah. to play what's right in, in the drums as opposed to listening to what the bass player is playing or what the, the piano player yeah. is playing or what the saxophone. When I'm sight yeah. reading, 
I'm trying to have my ears open to hear everything in relation to what I'm playing. So the second time I'm playing, even yeah. though yeah. they didn't write, they didn't write the the E of, of three in my part as a kick or or the bass, but I heard the bass player do that. So when we're the second time, I'm already, I've already heard what he's gonna do. And I and and so when I play it the second time, I'm with him on that. And it's just like I'm evolving, you know? Yeah. So yeah. you you can't you can't like sight read music, in my opinion, you can't sight read something with closed ears you have to sight read something with with uh, attention to every member in the band you know you, you, you have to sight reading making music that is hard of Ma course yeah at the same time that, yeah i mean but that's how i mean like when we practice these um you know uh, i know you man you practice all the time it's great um you know we write down pieces we write down stuff on a piece of paper rhythms or whatever kicks you know i'll go over a certain rhythm on a piece of paper or some kicks i'll go over 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 it a lot in trying to evolve each time trying to uh, approach it from a, from the left trying to approach it from the right approach it from the center for, approach it from up from from down uh just you know i i really i want to basically eat the music i want the music inside me if it's in me i can do whatever i want to if the music is on the outside, the music for me is the one that um, uh, I don't want to say controls you, but like you're not connected if it's on the outside. But if the music is on the inside, you've internalized it, then you yeah. can make it into any shape you want to. It's like clay. It's like or it's like a, a pie or a cake or it's food. You know, you're yeah. making it into something incredible, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, great. I don't know if that makes sense, you know. Oh, hey, 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 brother. hey, brother, we have a lot of questions for you here. Uh, I have here, a lot right? of questions too, uh, too but uh, people <laughs> are, are listening to you and, uh, and we have to, 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 to take them here. Uh, many people are saying hello. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I turned it on. Okay. I see Graham. I see Clemens. That's great. Uh, I studied with Clarence a couple of years ago and always walking out inspiration and full of fire music. That's oh. thanks again, brother. <laughs> thanks, Joy, Clemens. I it. Um, <laughs> Murilo Bueno, uh, he's Brazilian. Uh, he, he has a question to you. Hi, Clarence. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your experience working with Andrea Marques and Patitucci playing metal songs? You sound amazing together. Uh, I remember that you did in Argentina that 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 concert. <laughs> that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, hey, that was our. You know what? We didn't. We didn't have. A, I didn't play with them before, so that was like I was filling in. Brian Blade did the record, and when they asked me to play, it was a situation where we basically didn't have time for rehearsal. I was yeah. just going to fly to Argentina, go to the stage in sound check go over the music and play the concert so you know what you guys and fortunately <laughs> or fortunately it depends on how you look at it um what you see because there's, there's a video right i think that that concert was was filmed um that's me for the most part playing that music for the first time so yeah you know, wow. i mean especially in, in in a live setting um but i mean brian sounded amazing as he always does uh, on on anything but um yeah, it's, I mean, Patitucci is like a rock. Anybody, if you know, if you get a chance to play with Patitucci, man, it's just like, oh, yeah, I, I don't know, him, Christian. I mean, all, all of these bass players, it's just like you can just hold on and they just, they just ride, you know, they just go and you can just, and it's fun for me because then I'm like, oh my God, I can do whatever I want to and they're going to be solid. They're going to be there, you know, uh -huh. or they're going to go with me. But then I have to be solid, too. you know. It's just like it's just it's a, it's support. It's great, you know. Yeah. But um, you know that that came about um, and you know some years back, I guess when I was working with Luciana Souza, mm -hmm. um, I be, well, I mean even before that, but I, I was interested in 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 the music of Brazil, Brazilian, mm -hmm. and so I you know I started studying and and asking a lot of questions. I think that um super super important or vital that drummers ask questions i think we're at we're it seemed like we're in a place now that we're too shy or i don't know what it is but like drummers don't 
ask other drummers questions. It's just like, uh, I don't know. It seems like it's like a, you know, it's like, oh, it's not a re respect thing or something. Man, it, the music is free, right? The music is out there. And I think the music is out there to be shared, right? I mean, man. I mean, I got a question for you too later, but it's just like we we need to talk about talk about this music. So, like when I was learning music, I, I remember asking um, Romero Lombambo to listen yeah. to my mara, to to listen to my Marica too, and to see uh, if I was playing it right, you know. And uh, he he listened, you know, and he was just uh, like, "Yeah, maybe you want to change this or do this, you know." But it was just it, you have to be humble enough to be like, "Yo, man, I don't know this. Show me what to do or help me." play this yeah. stuff you know yeah. so um you know playing uh bossa nova you know um one of the greatest things that i learned from playing with luciana was like you know most people uh, drummers we play bossa novas right or, or sambas and we it, you can do this but like you know is the, the snare the room shot is is really really busy right or, or whatever yeah. or we're playing um say if we're playing um uh, if we're playing a, a, a like a bossa, right? Yeah. Norm normally it would be you know, and this is very simple. This is nothing. This is not like uh, some like aha moment. But this is for I learned this from Luciana, and I thought this was great. So normally I would play a bossa nova, a slow bossa nova, like you know, this sim the 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 typical way. Mm. Right. So but Luciana taught me to even like play simpler, even like so you can play this. So you're just playing the rim shot very simply like right yeah. because uh, drummers oh you know it's fun to play bossa in brazilia but we play too busy but like when you're playing you know i i, I love yeah. rosa passos so if i'm playing with i imagine playing with rosa passos and you just want that that rim that rim just to sit right in the middle of that groove so you got to yeah. yes it's, it's, you know what i'm saying it's that sim yeah. the simplicity that makes it yeah. work and the and the and the rhythm is still there. You don't have to play out that 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 hitch of the that is part. Exactly. That you that you, right. You, you you play around the rhythm. Uh, sometimes I, I saw people playing a, a kind of bossa nova or something like that. All the time. And you can feel that that button, but you don't have to play that all the time. That's that's it. I mean, I think. I don't want to sound like a, a, a an old old <laughs> old man here, but like it comes with being humble. Like we practice so much, we have all these chops, and we want to show the world that we got a lot of chops and we got a lot of like yeah, but, intellect. But uh, like being able to set that apart, you have it. Say you you know it. Sure. Doesn't mean you have to show it all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. when you can when you have restraint, it's like it's like. You know, I look at it as 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 if I was studying martial arts, right? You're studying Bruce Lee was an am amazing martial artist, but he wasn't going around beating up everybody and showing how every showing people how amazing he was at at fighting. Yeah. You keep it to yourself and you use it when you need to. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it makes you, I think, an a, a more incredible musician because you have restraint and, and people like it's always growing. Like a lot of young drummers or a lot of, you know, a lot of drummers in, in general, they come out the gate and it's just like on 10 immediately. It's just like, yeah, it's yeah. complicated. It's, it's, and, yeah. and some music requires that. And so it's fun. I know it's, it's, it's really amazing, but like to be able to ramp up to that, I think is, is definitely where I'm, where I'm coming from. Oh, that's great. You know? 
I see. I saw Celcio. Celcio. Celcio uh, says uh, hello. That cat. I love him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Celcio. Yeah. He sends a hug to you and, and you and him oh. for me in Brazil. Forget about it. It's with you Celso. and him. There's nothing oh. else. <laughs> Celso is my brother. I, I, I love him. Yeah. Actually, we sh we share the, the, this proxy home room. Oh, really? Uh, we share that. Yeah, yeah. Because oh, nice, both, nice. both of us, we live in apartment, and people right, are right, exactly. so so. Uh, permissive like that to, to play drums in the, in the, of course. the, the apartment. Of course. But we, sh of we course. share the same room. But yeah, are, I'm. Uh, so please. No, 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 no. I, I, I you know, fortunately, I, uh, I bought my place and and I was able to carve out a little room for for my drums. And so it's it's uh, I'm very fortunate being in an apartment in New York um, that I can still play pretty much wow. you know wow. 24 hours a day you know i can't play i wouldn't say i, I wouldn't go down and start trying to play heavy metal at 12 o'clock at night but you know i can practice and do everything that i need to do on my drums in my house without leaving yeah. um and I, I i do feel that that's uh that's a blessing you know that's a blessing yeah. That, you know, me, that's a blessing. I would love. To unfortunately, do I don't. I don't always. You know, I know the uh, some drummers that would take advantage of this. I, you know, unfortunately, I don't always get a chance to come down here and do it because you know I have other things that, uh, that I other responsibilities and other things that I'm into. I love fishing. I go fishing. I I cook. Oh. I'm cooking. You know, I'm doing all of this stuff, which I think it enhances the the musician part of you too. Um, actually. It's funny, but when I had kids, it made my it changed the way that I play drums. Also, it just made me want to okay. give more to the music in a different way, just in a more you know, I guess in a more humble way, you know. Yeah, they they, ch they changed everything. That you start to think music different. You start to to bring more things for the music, and it, it, you start to to give more to give more importance for the time that are you playing. Yes. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Boring, boring. Yeah. You don't take it for granted. You know, you know, it's and when you play, then it's just like, OK, this is important. This is like, you know, this moment, you know, I'm not going to take it for granted. So it's and what you bring to the music, what you add to the music is uh, hopefully it's going to be, you know, um, something special. You know, yeah. that's the way I look at it. You know, I, I have one more drummer question. My question about your playing. <laughs> Man, uh -oh. I, ha I have to tell you a story. Do you know Chico Pinheiro, the guitar player? Yes, yes, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I don't, he's I don't a bad know. cat, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's amazing. He's living here, uh, uh, there in, in, in... Yeah, in New York. In, yeah, in New yeah, York. yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we played together like uh, maybe, a, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago or something, and we rode together. I gave him a ride home, but uh, oh, wow. yeah, super, super cat. Go ahead, I'm yeah. sorry. And uh, he used to live here. We are so friends. I record a lot of, the, uh, of his uh, albums. And the last one, uh, uh, inclusive, uh, included. Uh, but um, so so long time ago, he gave me a cassette. Uh, do you know cassette? I am an old guy. I don't know about you. Shut up. But... <laughs> do you know go to go to go to my bio. I'm, I'm yeah. quite sure I'm older than you. <laughs> And was a was a Joshua Ridman record, and he yeah. said here there is a, is a great drummer that was uh, Gregory Hutchinson, and mm -hmm. I started to, to to listen that, and I said, man, that is amazing. Greg is amazing. He's a bad cat. Is that is that is that word is, is good? Bad cat and it's amazing, and I love him. But that was one song in this record that was a different drummer. That was right. Tinko 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 from from. from right. <laughs> From Monk, and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was a different sound, and, and I and, and I thought, I thought, man, that should be a very a very a guy that knows how he's doing. He's just playing. He's not trying to to, to demonstrate anything. So <laughs> so uh, uh, personality. So so because the the, the first hit is something. So Simple, but so musical. <laughs> yeah, I never know, know uh, who 
was that guy uh, uh, because I don't have the, the, the credits. And ah, uh, okay. Some some months ago, I had the credit and I, I saw that was you, man. I, I heard that a lot of me in my life, and I, I I can feel that you are playing for us. This is a, a Brazilian a Brazilian drama question. We mm -hmm. just know about jazz, uh, about the, the, the jazz part and like that. With the same, the same uh, uh, right button. And I right. can feel that you, with that recording, are playing just on the tempo. And I, I feel that, are you playing on the beat with the bass. And that's the question that I have all the time when I have to play uh, with American uh, musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, how can I say, how can I feel to switch that that, that kind of, of, of conduction, that high pattern to, 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 to change that? When, when should I play a little bit more relaxed? When should I play more on the tempo in front of the bass player or relax it with the bass player mm, there's mm. there's some trick about that or just listening and try to to, to play well i mean of course I'm a, i'm a big fan of playing you know on top of the beat some people say uh rushing but i i, I look at it as, ah. as being on top of the beat that's where i hear it and actually when i first heard greg hutchinson play um he was the first young person that I heard play on top of the beat and play it so well, mm -hmm. you know, us being early twenties. Um, so th for me, there's certain tempos that I automatically hear on top of the beat. There's certain tempos that I hear and I want to play behind the beat, you know, um, mm -hmm. also, but you know, you do have to be aware of what, of how the bass player plays. If it's a bass player that tends to slow down or play on the backside of the beat, then I think that I need to be on top for the whole night I, because I need to need to pull him along. Because after okay. a while, you know, you listen to these recordings and you start, you hear, um, ding, ding, and then by the time you get to the melody out, you're like, ding, ding, ding. you know, still feels good, but it's slower, you know? And I remember when I was with Ellis Marcellus many years ago, Ellis told me, he said, man, whatever you do, don't drag. If you're going to do anything, rush, push ahead. And I, I was, I don't know, 19 or something when he told me that. And um, because he played a recording of us and we were playing, I don't know, two bass hit. Da -da -da -da, that's that, 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 that. We, we always played that. He loved that song. and It was like a drum feature. Um, but then, and it was a blues, but then by the time we got to the, you know, the head out, it was like, da, 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 and it was just like, it was slow, you know? So it just like, when you, when you, when you realize that it's like the music is heavy, you want the music to always be light, no matter what, even if you're playing in the middle of the beat, you know? Um, so like if I'm playing with a bass player on a very like slow medium tune, like I, the way that I think of, of the beat is I'm not thinking of, I'm letting the bass be my, my, my foundation. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so the time is here and I want in my hands, I want my hands to be more loose on top of that. So this is the foundation. So, um, mm -hmm. I can I can I can slow the time down. I can do whatever I want to hear, and it sounds like I'm slowing down. But the count that I'm hearing is yeah, boom in my body, right? It's here. Yeah. And then if I'm thinking on top, um, a lot of times drummers want to know like just a quick way of how to play on top. And the way that I look at it, my favorite drummers were like um, uh, so Ben Riley, Lewis Hayes, and a lot of those drummers played. Uh, Jimmy Cobb, they played um, from the quarter note, you know, uh, when you think about playing on top, right? So especially Lewis Hayes. Um, so if the tempo is like one, two, 
uh, uh, wow. like most drummers would want to play the cymbal pattern, but Lewis Hayes would play quarter notes in the way he comps on the on on the snare drum and bass drum would be very simple. So it's just like it's really driving the quarter note. Yeah. Yeah. Even if you're putting the skip beat in there, the skip beat is very it's very short. Short. Mm -hmm. Not bidding thing. It's like it's it's a very it's like it's almost um just in detail. Exactly, you know, as opposed to Ding -a -ding, spang -a -ling, spang -a -ling. It's not yeah. spang. It's not spang -a -ling. exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, I, I saw somebody. I, I somebody asked a quick question um, about um, open close technique. You know, I I wouldn't say that I know a lot about that. You would know more. But some years ago, I had some issues with my my right hand um, um, for whatever reason. So I did have to work on trying to modify my uh hand my finger or hand position because okay. you know it felt like i was having some pain here wow. right behind the okay. ulnar um which you know it's i went to the doctor he's like well you play drums you've been playing th drums for 30 years what do you expect you know <laughs> that wasn't the answer that wasn't the answer that i wanted to hear <laughs> but um um, so, but um, what what I'm doing, and I'm still in it. In it's a very it's very early in that stage. I, I did, demonstrated this with Greg, um, maybe a month or so ago. Um, so a lot of people play like this, right? I mean, you can play with the finger, right? Yeah. Or closed finger. Yeah. Right. Or open like this. But um, after doing that a while, then I would start to have these these issues, right? Some pain. So mm -hmm. um, I came up with. Um, like I said, it's, it's still in the early stages, but a modified open close where I'm actually using the thumb to okay. propel the stick, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is one, two. Okay. Wow. So my thumb is actually doing this. My my wrist is not, the wrist is not moving. And it's, not this moving. is open close. This is open close. Oh, you okay. see my fingers? My fingers are going down. That's open yeah. close, right? But but my mo exactly, but my modified um, stroke is not that. My modified stroke, if you watch my fingers, they're gonna close. Yeah, you still this here. They they the, yeah these the, these fingers are just here. The thumb is just doing like it's going back and forward. Man, that's can hard. you see that? Right, exactly. Yeah. So if I did it, That's right. Hard. So yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's. Wow. Man, yeah, you do that. Yeah. So it's. Wow. I mean, it's weird, and I'm trying to, you know, work on it. But to be honest, when I started doing it, you know, of course, it has some limitations. But, um, but when I started doing it. I, I had less pain. So I know a yeah. lot of drummers do do come across having, you know, tendonitis issues and things like that. It comes with the territory, right? Because that's what we do. But um but by me coming up with that that way of doing it, I was like, wow, that was uh it's pretty incredible for me, you know. And because I even with the left hand, I used to do that push pull this thing uh right. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Right, right. And you, and actually, you probably heard me do it on that Joshua Redman record or whatever. But like, uh -huh. you know. But I mean, once you do that, it does give you some some tension here. So yeah, you have to be, yeah. you know, you have to be careful. But I think the moral of the story is that, you know, um, you you have to come or you have to be flexible enough to explore different ways of doing the same thing that you've been doing many 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 years and don't be afraid to to you know because some drummers when they have pain they just play through it you know they 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 yeah. just they just keep doing it and then you know sometimes they can't play or whatever yeah. but you know you have to you know for me 
I don't know. I, I felt like, or I feel like I'm kind of on this journey of trying to, I'm just trying to find different ways of, of, of playing, you know, it's the yeah. same thing as, um, so like, I'll show you this. Um, can you see, you can, can you see my left hand? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Which is normal. Right. So, but, um, so for me, when I was trying to learn how to play or not trying to learn how to play, but like working on playing different like Samba patterns, Right? It's three notes. Yeah, it's three notes. Wow. Right? So it's like my right hand can't do it. It's like, so it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm a right handed drummer, but I'm like, fuck. I, 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 oh, sorry. I'm like, <laughs> I should be able to do it with my right hand. But, you know, there's, there's certain things that you can't do with the yeah. other hand. <laughs> you, I, I, I love that kind of linear, linear uh, grooves. Right. Right. But I can do that with my right hand. You can do it with your right hand because you're right-handed, and, and I should be able to do do, do it with my right hand also. But oh, <laughs> unfortunately, uh, I, unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> uh, 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 when you talk, when you play that, I remember that that there is a band here that's Mantiqueira, a big band. Uh, from uh, Proveta. Proveta is a very right? a very good saxophone player, and Celso used to play that. Uh, Celso oh, played okay. that, uh, on this band. Mm -hmm. uh, but they had a, 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 a drummer before that was Lelo Izar, and they used to play, man, they used to play a, a very fast tempos. That's mm. hard to play, to play soft. And, and this guy, Lelo, used to play like you playing, but just mm -hmm. uh, with the high With hand. the right hand. Yes, uh -huh. and like kind of linear things, and what's amazing like that. <laughs> For me, it's so it's so hard to play like that because uh, change my way. I, I, I practice that a lot, but when I have to play, I always miss that. To, to play mm. from this mm. but it's amazing that that the way the mix between two, two hands uh, that that he can do uh, man that's very it, cool. i mean it does it does you know i mean <clears throat> if i had one wish to get from the genie it would be able to play like you and celsia over the right hand I, I mean i just i you know douglas alfonso all those cats there's some cats in brazil i mean this yeah. uh, uh raymond monte it's all it's all the you guys have this thing i love that i you know and if I had one wish, I would please grant me that, but I can't do that. So we have to figure out like, and I think it's important. We, I have to figure out my voice. It's like, I have to yeah. figure out how yeah, I yeah. can play that. I can't play it your way. I have to come up with a way that maybe is just as valid. It's going to feel different, that, but I that, have to come up. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is, that's the, the, is, is the trick. You have to, 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 to find your own voice uh, to, to, to play anything. And that is, very very good i, I love that uh, so uh, uh, sometimes uh, of course i play with american uh, american people and they never asked me to change my accent just mm. just let's try to they play like, like that it's, it's a different uh, it's a different accent but that's it's okay and, and, and i think sometimes i spend a lot of time trying to play with your accent with, or with the gregory Hudson accent it's hard to mm -hmm. be but I have mm -hmm. to understand that. But when I'm playing, it's different, and I have to 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 leave it that and and try to do the the, the best that I can do with that. I think that's yeah. The, I mean, the, that's it exactly. I mean, like Greg and I, we yeah. grew up listening to the same music as as, as Kenny Washington or you know uh, a, a number of drummers, uh, Rodney Green. I mean, it's, the list is long. So there's a certain language. Right. There's a certain vocabulary that comes along with that listening. So mm -hmm. a lot of times that's what we're doing. You know, it's coming out of Tony Williams, coming out of Philly Joe, coming out of Elvin, coming out of Lewis Hayes, Jimmy Cobb. You know, it's it's those kinds of things. But then when you 
Uh, and that was our generation. But then when you listen to somebody like Marcus Gilmore, that's a whole different vocabulary, right? It's it's yeah. not the same vocabulary, even though his grandfather's like Roy Haynes, you know, I can hear and I can see that. But what he's done with that, it's pretty incredible. And and he, you know, he I, I don't want to say he wasn't afraid, but he he just found his voice immediately, like early on what he yeah. wanted to do with that information. Because I think having somebody as strong as Roy Haynes as my grandfather, I would want to play like him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, man, he's, he's, so he's uh, influence. come on. I mean, like, if you think about somebody who played with Bird, who played with Train, who played with, I mean, he's still, alive. he's still playing. So it's like, yeah. and that guy, you know, he's never taken a music lesson ever. Right. Doesn't yeah. read this. Just like, he just plays. He was just like, he said one day from what I hear, I can do that. And he just started to practice on doing that. And he has a very, um, a very unique and a very identifiable voice on the drums, yeah. you know? So, yeah. um, you know, that's definitely what I try to keep at the forefront too, in my practice, in my practice time when I, you know, uh, come down here and I, work on transcriptions or whatever I'm doing. Like I, I I'm still aware that I have something to contribute to the music. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, you know, like you you can you play that um I love that um that uh the thing you you did uh, it was on um open house when you said uh It's ah, at the, um, yeah, you remember you were doing it? Like exactly, but you were doing it with the, yeah, yeah, with the toms. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. right? Because it, it, it is the voice, that voice, it's the voice that people play with the cowbells. Like right, that. exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's so melodic uh, 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 voice from from Marco too. No, I mean that's that's really because I was doing it all on the snare drum at first, you know. Um, uh, I was doing it, you know, and not trying to because you guys have a different sensibility of where the music or where the rhythms are coming from. So, and and what's going on in the percussion section here in America, we're just like kind of thinking, okay. What's the drum part? You know, not trying to necessarily always incorporate all the like like in Cuban music, we're always trying to incorporate the cowbell. We're trying mm -hmm. to and the bata is playing this, and we're trying to put that all on the drum set. Um, yeah, from that music. But in America, it's just like we only think about like the drum part. So trying yeah. to you know be being trying to being aware or try to be aware of of all of what the other percussionist is doing is a great thing that we should add to our playing you know i love playing with percussion that's what you know and i respect playing with percussionists and and i respect them enough that i don't step on them you know um yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah because there's some drummers that play and the percussionist has to play with that drummer you yeah. know i want to yeah. play i want the percussionist to play with me i want us to act as one yeah instead of like you know it's not about you following me or i'm following you it's like let's have, have a to conversation together. together yeah mm. it's but, hard you know. it's, it's hard to to to, to do to, to, to oh listen. Sure. but uh, but you gotta yeah, exactly yeah, you said you have to you listen, listen. And, and, and you don't sometimes you don't have to talk just listening here that there, exactly. there is a, 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 a percussion player that i don't know if you know him he used to play with pat Matin, uh marcel zinho his son of the Messi Marcel, Marcel, uh, Armando Marcel. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Man, I don't that, know if that I know. Cat, uh, that, that cat, you start to play with Marcel, and Marcel came as as a as a guest and start to play with you, and you you don't realize that he's playing with you, but 
something starts to, to, to feeling very good, very good. And if he stops to play, he said, you, you think, well, what's happened here? Because he, he, he never, uh, you, you never yeah. pay attention in, in his percussion. Yeah. It's something that mm -hmm. comes from the music and the, 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 the group start to, 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 to grow up, growing up and, and it's so tasty. Uh, but if you take it away, you miss it, right? <laughs> yeah, you miss it a lot. Yeah, that's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. yeah. No, I, uh, you know. Uh, uh, Clarence, we have a lot of uh, questions here. Uh, that, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's uh, look at uh, 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 We start to talk here and, and we have to pay attention to people. But someone uh, asked something about uh, your uh, your ideas uh, uh, for the, the your composition and arrangement. And that was one of uh, 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 and that was a question that I had to you. Do you bring a lot of drum things for 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 your arrangements and your approach for, as a composer and arrangement, or you bring it from the music, or you do you play another instrument? Uh, where, where, talk about uh, uh, please a little about. Your approach to, to do an arrangement as you do for for, for the, this this monk album that you change that 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 gorgeous right. thing that you do it you do different thing. Um, you know, for me, the way that I write and the way that I arrange is um, I do it at the piano. Mm -hmm. It's always from a, a melodic or 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 harmonic standpoint even if i'm singing the rhythm of not necessarily what the final drum part is going to be but you know it may be based off of a, a rhythm or something that i'm hearing but um to be really really honest the drum part is always the last part for me that yeah. <laughs> i put on the music it, I, you know and um at one time you know i've i I was battling with myself because I felt like I would listen to drummers, other drummers compositions. And you could tell that that composition started from a groove or some of the idea that they had. And that's great. Yeah. But I like, I, I, I didn't write that way. So I was like, man, I play drums. Should I write like that? Because that's what, you know, my, my compositions and arrangements, they, it doesn't have what I'm hearing in somebody else's thing. But, At the end of the day, you know, talking with friends and Hutch, I talked to Greg a lot about this. I talked to my wife about this. You know, they're just like, they, you have to be you. So, you know, I write at the piano. I write the whole arrangement. I do all of that kind of stuff. The drums are always the last part. And to be quite honest, man, it's hard. Like, because I, I'll have this great arrangement, and, you know, and I'm like Antonio Sanchez in, the, in that when we do demos at our house mm -hmm. or... Um, You know, I have a, a computer set up. My demos sound pretty full. You know, oh. I can play, program the bass, I program the voice. Yeah, I sing on it. I do, I do all of that stuff. So the demos sound almost like the re the final, final, um, the final product. So when I have the arrangement done, then I come back and I sit down. I'm like, okay, what am I going to play on the drums? You know, and yeah. it's kind of it's kind of nice in that I'm not trying to force the arrangement to follow the drums or trying to put this kind of slick groove on top of what I came up with. It's like I have to sit down and and think about what the arrangement needs or what, you know, what the song needs, you know. So, yeah. you know, I just it's funny that we're talking about this because I started working on my latest project, uh, I don't know, a while ago. Right. You know. Uh, off and on for last year and a half, two years or something like that. And a song that I had been struggling with for like two years, just like not, you know, every time I came down on the drums, it was just like, no, I don't really like that. I don't like that. So I would just leave it. I would never visit it again. And uh, so last week I was at the, the lake in Pennsylvania. And then I went to like uh, upstate New York and fishing or whatever. And I just thought about this groove for this song. And I was like, man, it just needs something simple. And so what 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 it ended up being was like I was playing this pattern. And I was like, what if I just took the first part of the pattern, just the, the one, the, the first four beats or whatever it was, 
and simplified it and just played that. And that, and I, when I did that, I came home two days ago and I came down, hit record and you know, I got my studio on. I'm like, and I played it over the track. I was like, yeah, that's, that's what that it needs. Is. So I ended up, you know, the next day I, you know, came down and, and started recording. And so that's, that's how the drum parts come, you know, like I, I listen to the music and it's kind of nice that I guess if you put the drums on at the end, because if you want to be complicated, you can see what yeah. that sounds like being complicated or being really, you know, displacing the rhythm or, you know, um, yeah. in a way that that wouldn't necessarily happen if you are um, recording with everybody at the same time. My latest project that I'm doing is yeah. a studio project and I'm doing it here at my house in the studio, meaning that, you know, everything is with a click track. You um, did everything at your house? I did everything. Man, yeah, I sent I sent you a couple of a couple yeah, of uh, ideas. Yeah, I did everything here. Um, wow. You know, um, so um, it when you when you record that way as opposed to with a live band, mm -hmm. I guess you have that magnifying glass on top of of you. You're like really else. You're looking at the drums or you're hearing the drums. Like oh, it just really doesn't, you know. It's really, it's hard. Like, you know, like for me anyway, like if I'm playing with a click track, it's just like, oh man, that 16th note's a little behind the beat. That one's, you know, and then I get really anal. But then you have to stop thinking that way. And you got to be like, okay, the music has to just live. And you have to be okay with it being uh, imperfect sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like sometimes I, I listen to recordings and, and it seems like the drummer is just playing perfect. You know, like when I, I love Antonio, I'm like, I always, I'm like, man, you're just perfect. Everything you play just seems like it just just even the 60. Everything is just yeah laid out. And, you know, yeah. um, but with my playing, you know, I, I had to I had to come to the realization that, you know, everything is not going to be perfect. I have to whatever Clarence Penn is going to bring to the table. And it has to, it has to be that. And I have yeah. to make it work, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. On, on on this recording that you you, you sent me today, that uh, this right. that, that that new project, there is a lot of percussion to your yeah, I, percussion. Yeah. See, yeah, because I I I love. Um, sorry to interrupt, but uh, so, man, I got so far into flamenco music some years ago, I just overdosed on. I just. I, man, I just I think it's just an incredible genre of music. I just I love mm -hmm. Cajon. I love Palmas. Yeah, I love the voice. Amazing. It's so emotional. The guitarist. It's you know, um, it's very it's very organic in the fact that it's not it's a, not a, a written music. Um, mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So um, the arrangement of that song that I sent to you. Um, if you heard the original song, the original song is by uh, an amazing drummer, uh, Don Henley, super famous, played with the Eagles, mm -hmm. um, you know, but like a just pop drummer. Um, and and uh, so that that is almost like a, a boloria, but in nine boloria. or in six. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, because normally we got it. Don't. Aunt. Uh, aunt. Aunt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, mm -hmm. twelve, wherever you want to put it, right? But then my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, oh, yeah. five, six, seven. And so I, I that's my take on hearing that. I don't know how <laughs> why I did that, but when I when I did that, so it, right, you hear I like I, I got claps, I got I got cajon, I got shakers, I'm playing all of that stuff here. Um and then it, that's another case in point. So, like when I played Cajon, I was like, "Man, I don't really need to put a drum part at least on the first part of the song." If you listen to it, I'm not really playing drums that much on there. I'm playing yeah. drums later, but I'm not really playing drums there. It didn't, you know. I was just like, "It doesn't need it." It's just like the music when you, you know, because first of all, in flamenco music, drums aren't necessarily. Um, a huge part of the fl flamenco music, right? It's mm -hmm. it's about the cajon, um, mm -hmm. it's about the palmas, it's about that big drum that they play. Um, yeah. So 
you know, just to keep in that tradition, the first half of that song is really just that the homage to all of the El Cigala, Paco de Lucia, all that stuff that I've heard um, over the years. And then later I come in, I get a little R&B yeah. flavor in there and, and things that way. So, yeah, I mean, you know, with my arranging and compositions, I try to incorporate everything that I've lived or everything that I've heard, you know? So, yeah. um, like, if you think about the uh, the monk tune on, the, I think, the first track, Well, You Need, and I think, is that maybe the first? Yeah. Unt, unt, unt. I think I got, you know, I heard that idea. I think I heard Ben Window play something like that um, many years ago. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. So, like, I, I bank these ideas, you know, yes. in the back of my mind. And when I'm in that writing place, sometimes, you know, I'll even write them down in my on my iPhone and say, yeah. oh, that was a cool idea. That was good. And then when I'm in the writing mode, I'll come back and I'll say, all right, let me see. What, what did I like over the last year or the last six months? Oh, this group. Oh, let me listen to that. And what was I thinking? Why did why did I like that? Or why do I like that? And then I think about, okay, I like it because it's displaced or whatever it is. And then I can kind of write something harmonically from there. I always start with the piano. I, oh, okay. 99 and a half percent of the time I start at the piano. I rarely come from the, from the, from the Great. drums, you Great. know, uh, but I mean, you, you, but you write and you, you know, you write also, do you write at the drums first and then no, you I, I, I piano? Do the same. I do the same. I always write, I wrote the music first. I, 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 I sing the music because I'm, I'm not a piano player, even a guitar player. I play, I, mm -hmm. I used to say that I play camp guitar. You know camp guitar? <laughs> <laughs> just just for, for singing. And, but uh, 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 I, I sing first. I, I, can, I go to, 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 to guitar and start to write. And, but I just think in the, uh, sometimes I just feel thinking in the drum set on the first rehearsal with the band for record i never ah, okay. thinking on the drum set first of course i just thinking i just listening everything together but i just right. sit down to play the drums with the band with but the band, even right. with a, when i do a, sometimes i do some arrangements that i know will be hard to me to play and i sit down mm. in the drum set and, and thinking something to, to some drum part especially mm -hmm. but right, right. Uh, uh, the most part i compose and arrange and i just the, let, let the drums play uh, uh, as the last part. See, see, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Um, I think, I think for, for me, it's frustrating because if someone brings me a piece of music, I feel like I have no attachment in in the way that I do with my arrangements or my compositions. So I play that music, and I'm I can bring all of these things. But then when it's mine. Like sometimes I I'm in the way of that. I'm like, oh, shoot, okay. You know, I start thinking. I'm like, why am I thinking? I should just play. Just let the music happen. But yeah. you know, these are these are things I'm letting you as the as the as the, the viewer into my my demented mind here. The, the stuff that I, <laughs> that happens in my, you know, because I think sometimes people think that it's uh, it's like instant or it's magic. It's just man, uh, there's a lot of work that go into crafting. A, a, a drum part or or song or an arrangement you know um a lot of times um i use logic i don't know if you write yeah. with the yeah. with so i use logic uh i just got ableton um i know greg i taught greg logic he uses ableton also but um so i write everything at logic uh, on logic and um i think by me uh having that or I come up with an arrangement, I, I'm open to it not being finished. Like sometimes I, I, a lot of people sit down and they start an arrangement and they don't stop until they finish. But yeah. for me, I do an arrangement or I come up with part and then I'm like, okay, I need to step away from it for a minute and then come back, you know? Yeah. Or, or what I'll do is I'll hit play and I can hear the, I can hear the music of my speakers downstairs if I'm upstairs 
cooking yeah. or whatever, and I'll let it play. So because I want to be away from it. I don't want to be sitting in front of the, the speakers, listening to it, analyzing it. I want to be where the music is just happening organically. Yeah. So if I'm upstairs yeah. and something sticks out, I'll be like, yeah. okay, you know, I don't like that part or this part doesn't sound like that, or yeah. that needs to be a bar of five or that needs to yeah. be a bar of six or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Instead yeah. of saying it's gotta be yeah. that. Yeah. You know. Listen, listen for the the, the, the the another the another part, another way from from from, from exactly. From, from, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know about you. Um, when you when people send you music, what's your concept of of learning a piece of music? How do you learn the piece of music? I mean, of course, it's not a, a one answer, but like, how do you, you know, what's yeah. your pro what's your process? I I, I love I love to 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 what. what of course, sometimes you don't have time to learn the music. People ask me to a recording session that you take the shots, and I I, I want to, to, to listen first. Uh, if is this situation, uh, recording session, I want to 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 to, to listen the music with some some shot at the same time to to try to 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 to, to think <laughs> about uh, thinking about different parts for the drum set. But uh -huh. when we have time to do that, I ask the people to, to send me the, 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 the files with some some demo, which uh -huh. chart, and I start uh -huh. to build the different parts for the, the, the drums. I had uh -huh. I had a, 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 a and always I am I am more detailist. Is that word detailist with more detail? I have more detail, details, details. Say it again. Uh -huh. uh, I, I, I did more special parts. Uh -huh. Music that was right. not my music. I pay more oh, attention okay. on the new part when I am just a drummer, not a composer. And right, right, right. So right. I, I had a, a, a kind of challenge last year, like two years ago. We recorded a, 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 an album, uh, just drum set, mandolin, and accordion. There is right. no bass, there is no uh, piano, no guitar, wow, just nice. drum set, mandolin, and harmony. Uh -huh. And I think that was so that was so challenging for me because I have to create some parts that the drum set plays a little melody, a melody, uh, mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. a kind of counterpoint yes. with the, 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 the right, right. And was I got so you. I, I love it to do that because I remember that was a, a, a samba, samba in seven like that. Uh -huh. But if I just play that, what's not so. <laughs> it's a little bit, and I try to do some melodies like that. Right. And I think that, uh -huh. that, that was the first time that I did that. Trying to, uh. to, to and I love that, and I'm trying to do more than uh, uh, since I, I, I did that. And but right. I, I, I try. I try to, to to get the music to understand the music first, and after that, I try to to, to, to make some drum parts. And I'm, I'm I'm asking in my head what I have to to, to to put here, and and but it it has to be natural. I don't have to ask mm. a lot. Uh, I, 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 what what I have for this, I, I I heard it at the same time when mm -hmm. I listened the the, the shot. But yeah, of no, course, I hear that, you. Uh, the, the hardest part is when people send you music, and uh, it, it happens with me sometimes. Uh, Teco Cardoso is a great, a great flute player, and mm -hmm. he did a song, and we, we had a band together, Vento Madeira, and it was a seven too. And he gave to me, and I prepared here a, a, a very I love it that a very different groove with cowbells with things, and wow. at the same time that he heard that on the rehearsal, he said, "Oh, we can take off these cowbells and these things." I mean, <laughs> he doesn't like that, but you have to be prepared to that to to, to change the things that, that you you can put yourself. That's what I said. Uh, you gotta yeah. you gotta have you have to have variations. You can't just lock yourself in. Yeah, yeah. playing one way. Um, yeah. If, quickly, a lot of people were asking, um, like, how do I learn music? And and most of the time, 
I learned music away from the drum set. Um, and if you're, you know, if you're fortunate, then the person that you're playing with or the music that you're going to have to learn, you, 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 you have the charts. But I mean, in the real world, I don't know about you, but I don't always have, they don't always send the charts. They'll send the MP3 quickly or they'll say, go to Spotify and you can hear my record. And then we'll yeah. play, you know, I'll send you stuff. And so I don't have the chart. So immediately I never come down to the drum set and try to listen and learn at the same time. I listen, I want to internalize what I'm yeah. hearing and what I do as, as I'm listening. And a lot of times I like to listen as I'm doing something else. I may be cleaning or I may be doing something because I don't yeah. want to be listening like that. I want it to come in organically. So um, a lot of times I'll let it play and I can, and I imagine what a drum chart would look like for me as hearing that music. <laughs> yeah, That's how I do. I, I imagine what the drum part, and then, I'll, you know, a lot of times when they send the real drum part, it's completely different, but I've already internalized the music and heard the phrases, how my body responds to that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So when I get the music, that's still so I can play it like the person who wrote the music sent it or I can play it the way that I was hearing it in my head. So what I do is always I fuse the two together, you know, I'm always, you know, and it's 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 a, it's about having choices. Right. It's always having different different ways of of of, of playing a certain yeah. part of music. And as I'm listening, I always try to to pick out the weirdest thing or the most interesting thing or the funny thing about, okay, wait, that wasn't, that wasn't like a bar. That wasn't an eight bar phrase. That was like a seven bar phrase. Oh, okay. And the B section goes, it's a six bar phrase. Like that kind of stuff I remember and I pay attention to because that's how you make music. So when I'm playing, when I go to the bridge and say, if it's a five bar bridge, mm -hmm. I can, I know I have that freedom of five bars to play, not because no, no, normally, it's going to be a four bar bridge or eight bar bridge or 16 bar, the, those kind yeah. of numbers. But if it's a, yeah. like I say, if it's something weird, you're like, Oh shoot, that's five or that's a seven bar phrase. Then I pay attention to that. I really, that detail. So that kind of detail, I pay attention and I make notes. And so when I'm playing somebody's music, I can bring that, that out. And it sounds like I'm more inside the music than just playing from the surface part. If that makes sense, you know? Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you know, so, <laughs> hey, but brother. I mean, yeah, yeah. Please, please. Go. No, no, uh, no. I was just saying. Um, um, I I appreciate you. You're actually the first person that heard my latest project. <laughs> so, oh, man. I was, I was a little, oh, I was, awesome. I was nervous to send it to you because, like, you know, um, man, it's amazing. It's quite I'm different. It's quite different. Uh, I know you didn't expect that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's different. It's different. Yeah. Uh, but I love it. The sound. The, 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 the second one that you you you, you, you sent me. That's a kind of a groove uh, uh, with words and, and some, some some. A brush in the mallet, exactly. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't have mallet here. Could, could you play it for, for, for me? Just 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 just. Yeah. Me. <laughs> I think the way that I. So I don't know. If, yeah, you can see that. So basically, it's um kind of like a folk kind of song. And um, mm -hmm. I definitely heard brushes. And yes. and I, I heard something keeping keeping the, the beat, too. So at first I did it this way. I put the left hand on the floor time over here. Wow. Right? And then I was like, okay, that's, you know, I could do that, but then it was kind of difficult for the whole song. So then, so what I ended up doing is, like, and so as you're playing a, a, a pop groove with the, with a mallet and a brush, you have to be careful, right? Because if you hit the, um, the 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 tom with the brush if it's in the same direction 
it's gonna make a snare sound. I don't want a snare yeah. sound. So I had yeah. to figure out how to make the pattern. You see what I'm, so when I'm playing two, I'm crossing over, so. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was just really trying to get into that, get into that mode. So, you know, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's amazing. just That's trying beautiful. to be, no, oh, thanks, man. I, you know, it's oh, it's simple, good. but it's simple, but <laughs> it's simple, but it's, it's so musical. I don't have melody. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's right. I mean, just just the, the yeah, because the snare adds. I mean, the the brush adds the 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 ambiance, right? The yeah. atmosphere. And then, yes. and and I'm really, yeah, I'm real, I'm not trying to beat the listener over the head with a, like a, you know, with the mallet on two and four. I just really want it to be this warm kind of, kind of thing yeah, I, in the I, background. I you know, kind of. the, 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 man, see, that's great that you would even notice that. You know, yeah, well, it's a bit the thumb bend. That's it's, 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 no, I mean, you know, that it it, it means a lot because to me that you you listen that way because i think as a drummer a lot of guys would be like okay well you didn't you didn't play something like incredibly fast oh. or like this group of sevens or like you know but like oh. at the end of the day right we're just trying to present music and li live you know that's i can music. do something else but yeah i want to present this th yeah music that's music that's music yeah no, no, no. that's beautiful beautiful have you also i use this a lot i don't know if you you're hip to this are you um do you do you know this man i love this this cat in germany called the wow. it's called the muff the muff stick i love this thing man no check i never out. see that and he um <laughs> check it out he makes he makes the beater so that's that's what i have on the beater on the bass drum okay on the bass drum right it's and then this I play when I'm playing like uh Tom Grooves or something like that. So wow. Can you can you hear the open and close of that? Or should yeah, I put the mic yeah. closer? You yeah, can yeah, hear, yeah. you know. I mean, even even if I'm playing even if I'm playing a groove, like on, on my record, I actually I'm I'm using this as the the uh, the, the back beat too. Wow. Right. So it's the, it's it, man. I mean, when the cat when I I was on tour, this German guy and I. It, it, it's man, it's could you and it, I, I saw this other closer for the camera. So wow. uh hold up, wow. there is the there's the name. It's called the muffs the muff stick. And you go to he's out of Germany and um he uh hold up, let me see. So is that he makes these also and I'm not trying to, I'm not like a plugger guy, but I'm into sharing uh things that work for what we do so yeah. this is a muffle right it has yeah. a, a little a little washer he puts on the inside right and that washer yeah. slides in that and then if you don't want it on the drum you just stick it up so it's wow. a it's a it's a it's a magnet right so that's what i have on all my tom so here oh that's great can you can you um yeah yeah so you can see that on the floor, Tom. Yeah. And you and, wow. And now, now it's down. And it and it and when it when it's on the floor, Tom, it's not it's not like a piece of tape. It's not muffling. Yeah. It's bound, it's still it still moves. Yeah. And it's soft. Oh, and if wow. it's too yeah, and if it's too heavy, you can take the washer out. Yeah. You know, you don't have to have that washer inside. And then it's another, it's a lighter sound. So, you know, I'm using um, this on my bass drum, which I, I actually, I love, especially in a studio session. I did, I did a, a Blue Note record recently and I use this one and hold on, let me get you the other one. <laughs> I 
I mean, it's, you know, like, I, I, well, I think what I was into was like, you know, how Steve Gadd and like John Robinson, like all those studio guys would come up with different sounds because I feel like a lot of drummers these days, we just play the shit out of the drums. We play the drums, but we don't really craft our sound unless yeah. it's a stack, a cymbal stack or something like that. But we don't really work on like the sound of it. Change so, sound. man, yeah. look how big this, this is a bass drum beater. Wow. That's this. Yeah, that one. These are bass drum beaters, too. So wow. I can play the bass drum wide open, right? Like I was playing a 22 or a 20 head super loose open and it, mm -hmm. it, it had a great bass drum sound. So I, between this one and that one and this this thing, man, the producer was like, what are you doing back there? What is that sound? I was like, man, this is what I'm doing. And he loved it. You know, yeah, you so it's just like, you know, you trying to you try to bring all of that stuff to the to the table, you know. <laughs> a lot that makes different sounds that, that that's amazing that, that, that right? is something it, that we, we have to, to to follow in the drum set every time to, changing the thing changing the, the, the vibes to to, to, to has uh, right sound. i think yeah exactly man i mean that's that, it's because the drums are it's in the percussion family right so we shouldn't limit ourselves to just playing drums it's percussion yeah. anything that you can yeah. beat on Right. Yeah. We, we, yeah. We, you know, anything yeah. you can shake, you know, I got, it's yeah. like a, it's like a toy studio here. I got like yeah, everything. And, and, and you do it a lot, man. I, I always, that, that, that I always see your videos playing with a lot of different things on the, 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 the front tom. Man, that's I mean, yeah. I mean, that's just, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, great. um, it's me being who I am and, and just trying to play. And when I'm in the moment, I'm just trying to utilize everything that's around me as opposed to, you know, having it all figured out. And when I get to B section, I'm going to go here. I'm going to, you know, I want it to be evolving. If there's a music stand right there, man, it's got a nice sound. How can I make that work inside this groove that I'm doing or like, you know, whatever, you know, I, 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 I use my, my, um, a lot of times I have uh, pants on and I'm playing, you know, I'll be doing rhythms that way. And even recording and, and playing it with the live drum set. And it really, and then people hear, they're like, what is that? What, what are you doing? And it's just like, I'm really incorporating, like I say, odd sounds, you know, different sounds, yeah. you know, from the, yeah. on the drum yeah. set or whatever, you know? And so I think it's really, it's like, you know, when you, when you come to, when it comes to drums, your mind should be wide open. There shouldn't be any limitations, you know, only thing you yeah. need to be thinking about is music and sound. And for me, keeping it organic, keeping it, oh. you know, nice and Great. warm. <laughs> Great. So music. Oh, man, man, we can't we can stay talking here for all the I know, days. I know. We got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody, oh. Some, somebody was saying, where can you buy it? I mean, if you look Muff Stick up, if Muff Stick in Germany, you'll, 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 um, you'll find it. Let me see. Um, the name is Muff Stick in Germany. Yeah, actually, I think in 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 in, in the bag says uh, muff cough so with a K. Like that's how you say muff head. Muff, yeah, which is head yeah. in German. Yeah, muff head. Yeah. Um, and the you know the guy was really nice enough to 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 send them. But I mean, you know, especially uh, like everybody's into hip hop and all that kind of stuff now. I mean, man, sample your make your own drum sounds, not be like taking somebody else's drum sounds you, you know i put that on the bass drum man there's no definition it's just you just hear this and and it's man yeah you're playing like some rim shot pocket stuff and <laughs> people like that <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Hey, brother, we have, we have to say hello to people that came here and we could, yeah who's that uh, we couldn't answer uh, every question but people Thank you for coming here. Blue Carrasco, New Canfield, New Canfield. There's a uh, hard names to me. Sag, uh. Duki, and people. Thank you <laughs> so much for coming, Clarence. Yeah, Clarence. I see all this stuff. Man, man, I love you, man. Thank you really oh, for, 
letting me be your letting me be your guinea pig. Uh, no, just your, your first one. I wish you success and and all the drummers people. Check out this guy because he has so much to offer. And if I lived in Brazil, I would be even now taking lessons with him every week. Honestly, uh, honestly. Uh, I will be on, on on your studio taking lessons. With nah, you, uh, no, yeah. man, <laughs> oh, no, man. you're 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 taking care of business. I I and I you know I often remember, uh, reflect on the time when you were in New York. Um, I don't know, maybe a year ago or so, when you were at Lincoln Center. When I, when I came down, you yeah, did a yeah, clinic, just, and I came ago. down. Yeah, I came I down to the right. clinic, and man, I mean, it was just. Right. So, just to, to see you, to man, get uh, out of here. I, I came down to learn. I just came down to get a lesson, uh, man. But to see I, I you remember, do what you do. Hmm? I remember that, that, that I, I, I told to, to, to the, 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 the coordinator, uh, hmm. and I said, I have a guest. I have a guest. And he said, oh, give his name. And I said, Clarence Spain. And he said, oh, Clarence Spain. Oh, he's so important. <laughs> Oh, uh, man. I don't, I don't, like, man, that guy is so amazing, man. That, that, that yeah, was so yeah. good time to, 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 I, I love to go to go there in New York to, 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 to see people and to see you, you play. Man, they, they love you here, man. They love you at Lincoln Center. Oh. I mean, you're, I mean, you're, you're a bad cat, man. So, and you got a lot to offer. You, you know, like I said before, we started this thing out with, you can explain what you do. You're such a nice guy, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, not to be all deep or anything, but honestly, being a nice guy like you, people want to be around that. People want to have you in their band. When you can bring that kind of energy, oh, and people love you. that. And that's, thank that's you. you know, that's what it's about. Really, we, you know, we have to work, We you know, just being a kind person, being an open person, you know, oh. being able to, to smile when the band leaders asking you to do some crazy stuff that's not musical or not you have yeah. to be able to smile and, and be like yeah okay let's i'll try it whatever you know what i'm saying like that's the hard part of doing what we do you know keeping that smile and keeping that great energy happening you know oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> thank you so much man. Thank obrigado, you. Obrigado. Oh, obrigado. <laughs> time. thank you for being here people thank you for listening and watching was uh, us I bring my son to, to, to make the translation, but my English was good. Thank you, Tao, for coming here. Rachel, thank, thank you, Tao. You Tao. For, yes. for, for, for being here with us. And then, and people from Open Studio, I have to announce that we're going to do of that uh, every week, every Wednesday. And the next one, we, we, we're going to have uh, Peter Erskine uh, uh, from to talk with us. Yeah. Uh, here. Oh, the master. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, thank you check, guys. Yeah. Check the course that you have here. And uh, I think my, my course is on, on the, 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 the screen. And <laughs> be, uh, uh, we, we have to wait for the, this new project from Clarence that's coming now. Yeah, hopefully, it, hopefully it'll come out uh, soon. I'm, you know, I'm really trying to, um, to get it, get it pushed through. So, you know, it's a, keep your it's a big open. project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep your yeah, eyes open. Yeah. And, you know, just c continue finding, you know, like, I think um, I was really active uh, uh, like a month ago on Instagram. I'm about to be active again, just sharing some concepts um, and ideas because um, it's just a, a good platform for me to just like do these little minute, minute things, you know, because I'm about really just trying to plant the seed. I'm not trying to give you the plant. I'm just trying to plant the seed so it grows. And it should grow how you want it to grow. But I just want to be the one that help you, you know, with with oh. the start, you know. So. Oh. Great. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank, thank you, man. You. Bye, thank bye. you. Thank you. All right. Ciao, ciao. Bye, 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 bye. 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 <laughs>